Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be doing a watercolor painting of this misty forest scene and I'm really excited to share it with you. So I started off by wetting my paper. Now there's a little bit of paint that was on my paintbrush for mixing my colors. So it's just a pink wash but I wet my whole paper and then I concentrated the red paint at the top of the paper and then kind of faded it down towards the bottom. This is called a gradated wash. I then let my paper dry completely before I started working on my trees. Now the color I'm using for my trees is basically the background color I used plus a little bit of blue. Now my background color was quidacridone red and a little bit of like lemon yellow or Hansa yellow light and then I also have ultramarine blue and those are the three colors I used for this entire painting. I then um, took that wash color we used for the background so the little bit of red that was oranged up with the yellow and I added just a touch of blue to it and I watered it down quite a bit so it wasn't super concentrated and then I started blocking in the trees. Now for the trees I'm trying to keep my brush strokes very irregular because I want it to look very organic and I'm just trying to imply the basic shapes of a pine tree. I'm not adding individual details for the most part. I'm just giving the basic shapes of what you would see a pine tree look like in it at the distance. Um, one way to help you keep kind of your brush strokes being random is to hold your brush really loosely and you can even hold it up higher on uh, your the brush handle um, that way you're not holding it quite as tightly so not grabbing it quite like you would hold a pencil so to speak you can just hold it up a little bit higher and that gives you a little bit more of an organic brush stroke appearance I'm also letting my pine trees kind of fade out towards the bottom um, I'm trying to imply that there's some mist kind of blocking the view and I'm just really looking at my reference photo and basing it off of there. Now at this point I decided I wanted some pine trees to look even paler than the ones I've, I had already added so I added a little bit more water to my mix and I started blocking in those pine trees as well and then I added a little bit of water to help fade out the color at the base. We will be putting a bunch of branches and trees in front of it and so it wasn't important that I painted the whole pine tree in that area. I then added a little bit more paint to that to just blend out the bottom of the tree a little bit and then I let that dry completely before I came in and started working on the next layer of pine trees. Now these pine trees are going to be a little bit more opaque and um, these ones have a little bit more of the blue in the mixture so they have a little bit more of a violet hue to them and I'm just taking my small paintbrush again and I'm just adding in some more trees on top of the ones that I already had painted. And it's just gonna keep being this process over and over again while we build up our forest. So since this painting was done, just using the three primary colors, quadacridone red, our ultramarine blue, and our Hansa yellow light, I wanna Kind of give some pointers on when you're just using your base primary colors. Sometimes in watercolor you want to you need to go very fast because sometimes it can get um, time sensitive. You need your paper to be wet while you do a technique. And so what I did is I mixed up my secondary colors. Our secondary colors are the colors that our primary colors make. So red and yellow make orange, red and blue make violet, and blue and yellow make green. Um, so I mixed up some secondary colors from those primary colors and just had them sitting on my palette ready to go. And then I could use them as I mix my paint. Now it wouldn't seem like I had to do a color, lot of color mixing because this is mostly just a red painting and shades of red, but I actually did. Um, I had to use my blues and make violets and I didn't want it to be too vibrant so then I had to make the opposite color to help dull that down. So I would suggest if you're just using your primary colors for this, um, I would just mix up some base colors to go off of. That way they're ready to go and can
can aid in your painting process. So I've done some darker trees on my forested area and I realized I wanted a few more ghostly distant looking trees and so I really watered down my paints and just started to imply these kind of ghostly trees that are just barely visible because I want them to look very distant and once I added those then I started working more on the mid ground and foreground so any trees that I thought were maybe sitting a little too high since we didn't paint them all the way down to the base of the painting I pulled some of those down and then I started mixing up the colors for the trees that are only going to be partially visible um, these trees are going to be the closest ones to us. They're mostly going to be out of frame and you're just going to see some of the branches kind of coming out, out from the side of the picture. Um, these trees are going to be painted a little more concentrated in color and I've added a little bit more green to them. Um, the reason why they have a little bit more green is because I, since they'll appear closer to, the, to us, they're not going to be as influenced by the mist and the sun and kind of the atmosphere. And so I wanted them to be a little bit more concentrated in color and to have some of those green hues. But I didn't want them to stand out too much, so I still kept some of the red undertones in them as well. Um, this painting is kind of interesting because typically when you are painting like a forest scene and you want your tree you want your trees that are very distant to be shorter than the ones that are closer to you but this picture kind of has a little bit of a caveat because our mo more distant trees in general are taller than the ones that are in the midground not the foreground but the midground ones and that's because we are looking kind of into a valley in this picture and so we're kind of standing on a hill and we're looking at the hill across from us so the trees in the middle are kind of sitting lower because they're in the valley section if that makes sense so that's why we're kind of bending the general rules that we do for landscape and um, picture to help create depth so I'm just adding some more of these tree branches I'm adding a little bit more detail and more individual pine needles and individual branches because these are closer and so we will see them with more detail now I'm gonna start blocking in some more of the trees and brush um, kind of in the middle of the painting and I'm going to be taking on a similar technique that I did on that side picture there's going to be a little bit more green undertones and I'm going to be adding a little bit more detail to each tree because they're closer I'm also going to be adding a few different types of trees this close so so some will be um, evergreen trees and then others will be trees that have lost their leaves in the in the fall and so they're just bare branches um, maybe it look like there's some bushes that you're just seeing the tops of the branches for that as well so I'm just kind of varying up a little bit um, what kind of plants we're seeing in the foreground because since it's closer we're gonna get a lot more detail of the individual plants in the distance, you're only seeing the largest ones because those are the only ones that are really visible. But as we get closer, I want to add more detail. I want to make it more interesting and have a little bit more variation with what we're painting. And I'm just using my tiny paintbrush for this and just keeping those paintbrush, those details very small. And I'm just building up the layers and letting them dry in between the layers because if I paint something and then I go and paint something that goes over the top of it while it's wet, all that paint is going to bleed into what was previously painted. And it just kind of makes it messy. So don't be afraid to take your time and let your paper dry between layers before coming back and doing another layer over the top. So one of the best tips I can give you as a watercolor artist is to take your time. There's moments where you have to work kind of fast because you need your paper to be wet, but when you need to do something else in your picture just let it dry and then come back to it i swear half of my painting time in watercolor is waiting for my paper to dry before i move on to the next um, area one thing you can do to help speed up the drying process if you want is to use like a heat tool um, i use a heat gun 
one that's often used for like embossing and crafting. And I like it because it puts out a lot of heat without um, blowing too much. You can use a blow dryer, but sometimes it blows your paint, especially if it's really wet. And you might not want that, especially if you're doing something really realistic. You don't want kind of a big s smear of paint blowing across your picture. Um, so that's just a tool um, you can use to help speed up the process if you want, but you don't have to. You can just let it naturally dry on its own. And often I do, especially if I'm going for a really soft blend of colors where I really want it to transition and be soft, then I let it dry on its own because if you speed up the drying process, then it, it doesn't allow the paint to spread and blend together quite as smoothly. And I'm just continuing to look at my reference photo and I'm just building up more and more of these layers. So this painting was one that I did as a warm up before I went and taught my watercolor class. This wasn't the painting I was teaching in my watercolor class. It has a similar concept. It was a misty forest, but this was just kind of a warm up piece to get creativity flowing to feel comfortable holding the paintbrushes and just kind of get in that mindset. And that's something I really encourage you guys to do. Um, before you jump into like a big project or before you start painting something that's really important to you, I would get out your sketchbook and just mess around, paint a picture or just practice doing different brush strokes or mixing colors. Just spend 5, 10, 15 minutes just warming up if you can. That way you are thinking clearly and you're in that mode before you jump in on your piece that is on expensive paper or one that you've been working on for a long time. At least for me, I find that it is a really good way to kind of help get me in that mode so I don't make silly mistakes. So another thing I found that is really helpful is to do practice paintings before you jump into your big final picture that you want to do. So say you want to do a big portrait of someone. Well, I found that doing some practice little thumbnail sketches and doing a, a little practice watercolor in my sketchbook really helps that whole process go a lot smoother. Um, so I really encourage you to kind of take a moment and do a few practice pieces before you jump in on your expensive paper. That way you have a game plan for what you want to do and how you're going to do it and it makes it a lot less stressful, especially with watercolor and how finicky it is to fix mistakes. It just makes it go easier. So now I'm going in with an old filbert brush that's kind of splayed out and I'm using it to create some random brush strokes. Um, I noticed that some of my branches were looking and pine needles were looking a little too similar um, because I was using the same brush and so I kept my paint pretty dry and I just use it to kind of flick random brush strokes on these branches to make it look a little bit more random and organic. I also darkened up the bottom of my painting just so it looks like there's other plants and foliage there and there's a little bit more contrast. And then I was looking at my picture, kind of figuring out the last few details, and I decided I needed a few more kind of mid-ground ghostly trees in the background. Um, they're not the palest, but they're not the darkest. They're just kind of in that in-between. But I noticed that there was a few kind of bald spots that had showed up, and so I'm just marking in a few of those little trees just to kind of help fill it out and make it look more forested. And now I'm on the final stages of the painting where I'm just doing the final little tweaks to kind of help it all come together. I'm looking at my reference photo as a guide, but I'm also looking at what the individual painting needs. Um, when you paint, you, you can't always look exactly like the photo. There's going to be variations in how you've applied things. There's going to be design elements that you want to change. And so... Your reference photos can take you to a certain point, but then you've got to look and see what the painting needs individually. 
So that's what I did. I did my final tweaks and now the painting is done. So I'm just removing the tape because I like those white borders on my sketchbook. And there is the finished piece. I hope you guys enjoyed this quick and easy tutorial and I hope you try it out. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them down below. And if you want to see more of what I create, please hit the like button and the subscribe button. Have a great day.